In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve five different reconstitution calculation questions and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa and if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So if you need an in-depth tutorial on reconstitution calculations, be sure to check out my other video. I'm going to put the link in the description and the card should pop up pretty shortly. But let's get right to it. This question says, a physician orders a 750 milligram dose of a medication in an IVPB. The drug is available as 15 gram powder for reconstitution. The instructions state to add 26 milliliters of sterile water for injection to the powder to get a concentration of 500 milligrams per milliliter. A. What is the powder volume of the drug? And B. How many milliliters of the reconstituted solution are needed to fill the order? So let's start with the solution to part A of the question. And in part A, the question is asking for powder volume. So we can start off with the equation which says final volume is equal to the volume of the diluent plus the powder volume called a PV. So from the question, it tells us that the volume of the diluent is 26 milliliters. However, the final volume is not given explicitly in the question. So how we address that is to make use of the understanding that final volume is also given by the quantity of the drug divided by final concentration. So we can also set this ratio equal to the volume of the diluent plus the powder volume, PV. And so from the question, the quantity of drug is given as 15 grams. The final concentration is given as 500 milligrams per milliliter. So for the units to be consistent, we can convert the 15 grams to milligrams. So 15 grams, we use the conversion factor. That stays one gram is a thousand milligrams. The grams cancel out and you end up with 15,000 milligrams and so we can substitute that information into the equation so we will have 15,000 milligrams divided by 500 milligrams per milliliter that should be equal to the volume of the diluent and from the question it is given as 26 milliliters plus the powder volume which is our unknown and so we'll put X. So on the left hand side of the equation, the milligrams cancel out and you end up with 30 milliliters being equal to 26 milliliters plus X. We can solve for X, which is our unknown. So X equals 30 milliliters minus 26 milliliters. And that should be equal to 4 milliliters. So the powder volume will be 4 milliliters. We can now go ahead and solve part B of the question. And in B, the question is asking for how many milliliters of the reconstituted solution are needed to fill the other. And so the approach here is to make use of the final concentration, which is given as 500 milligrams per milliliter. What that implies is that for each milliliter of reconstituted solution, you have 500 milligrams of drug in it. And so with this ratio, we can set up a proportion to determine how many milliliters will give us the 750 milligram dose that the patient needs. We can go ahead and solve for X, which is our unknown. So X equals one milliliter divided by 500 milligrams times 750 milligrams. The milligrams cancel out 
and you have x equals 1.5 milliliters this question says a powdered drug is available in vials containing 35 milligram of the drug the reconstitution instructions indicate to add 6.2 milliliters of sterile water for injection to obtain a concentration of 5 milligrams per milliliter a what is the powder volume of the drug b how many milliliters of the reconstituted drug are needed for 2.5 milligram dose in 50 milliliters normal saline so let's first proceed with the solution to part a of the question in part a the question is asking for powder volume of the drug and so we can start off with the equation that says final volume is equal to the volume of the diluent plus the powder volume which is PV however the final volume is not given explicitly in the question and so the way we want to approach this is to make use of the understanding that final volume is given as the quantity of drag divided by the final concentration and so this ratio is also equal to the volume of diluent plus the powder volume given as PV so from the question the quantity of drug is given as 35 milligrams and the final concentration is given as 5 milligrams per milliliter which implies that we can go ahead and substitute those values into the equation and so we have 35 milligrams divided by 5 milligrams per milliliter and that should be equal to the volume of diluent which is given as 6.2 milliliters plus the powder volume which is our unknown and so we will call that x so on the left hand side the milligrams will cancel out and then we will end up with 7 milliliters being equal to 6.2 milliliters plus x which is our unknown we can go ahead and solve for x so x equals 7 milliliters minus 6.2 milliliters which implies that x equals 0 0.8 milliliters and so the powder volume will be 0 0.8 milliliters so we can now proceed to find the solution to part B of the question and in part B the question is asking for how many milliliters of reconstituted drug are needed for 2.5 milligram dose and so the way we approach this is to make use of the final concentration which is 5 milligrams per milliliter and that implies that in each milliliter of reconstituted drug we have 5 milligrams of the drug so we can take this ratio and set up a proportion to determine how many milliliters will be needed for 2.5 milligrams of drug we can go ahead and solve for x which is our unknown so x equals 1 milliliter divided by 5 milligrams times 2.5 milligrams the milligrams cancel out and that implies that x equals 0 0.5 milliliters this question says 5 grams of an antibiotic is reconstituted with 9.3 milliliters of sterile water for injection powder volume equals 0 0.7 milliliters if 3 milliliters of the medication is added to a 50 milliliter IVPB how many grams of the medication was added to the IVPB so let's do a quick analysis of the question the question seeks to determine how many grams of the antibiotic the patient would receive if you gave 3 milliliters of the reconstituted antibiotic and so the way to approach this is to first determine what the final concentration of the reconstituted antibiotic is and the way we do that is to use the equation final concentration is equal to the quantity of drug 
divided by the final volume. Now the final volume is equal to the volume of the diluent plus the powder volume which we can represent as PV. And so from the question we can substitute the volume of diluent which is 9.3 milliliters and the powder volume which is 0 0.7 milliliters to determine what the final volume would actually be. So that would imply that the final volume is going to be equal to 9.3 milliliters plus 0 0.7 milliliters and that should be equal to 10 milliliters. So we can go ahead and substitute the final volume and quantity of drug into the first equation. And so that would imply that final concentration is equal to the quantity of drug which is given as 5 grams divided by the final volume which is 10 milliliters. And so that would be equal to 0 0.5 grams per milliliter. So now that we've determined the final concentration to be equal to 0 0.5 grams per milliliter, then that implies that we have 0 0.5 grams of antibiotic in each milliliter of reconstituted preparation. And so we can now set up a proportion to determine how many grams will be present in 3 milliliters of the medication. So we can now go ahead and solve for X, which is our unknown. And so X equals 0 0.5. 5 grams divided by 1 milliliter times 3 milliliters and so X is going to be equal to 1.5 grams. This question says a patient is to receive 400,000 units of penicillin G potassium in 100 milliliters D5W. Available is a vial of penicillin G potassium 1 million units and the manufacturer states that when 4.6 milliliters of a suitable diluent is added, a 200,000 units per milliliter solution will result. How many milliliters of reconstituted solution must be withdrawn and added to the bag of D5W? So let's do a quick analysis of the question. In this particular question, the goal is to determine the volume of reconstituted solution that will contain the 400,000 units of penicillin G potassium that you need to give the patient. And so the way you approach this, you need to look for the final concentration of your reconstituted solution. And from the question, it is given as 200,000 units per milliliter. And so this implies that in each milliliter of reconstituted solution, you have 200,000 units of penicillin G potassium. And so we can set up a proportion to determine how many milliliters will contain 400,000 units. So you can go ahead and solve for X, which is our unknown. So X equals 1 milliliter divided by 200,000 units times the 400,000 units, the units cancel out and you end up with X being equal to 2 milliliters. This question says the label of a 750 milligram dry powder for constitution into suspension states that when 12 milliliters of purified water are added to the powder, 15 milliliters of a pediatric suspension results containing 50 milligrams per milliliter. How many milliliters of water should the pharmacist add to the dry powder to prepare a prescription that calls for 100 milligram per teaspoon full? So here the question is asking for the volume of diluent in milliliters that needs to be added to the dry powder to prepare a concentration of 100 milligram per teaspoonful. 
So we can start off with the target concentration, which is 100 milligram per teaspoonful. And we want to convert the teaspoon to milliliters. So one teaspoon is equivalent to five milliliters. The teaspoon cancel out and you end up with 20 milligrams per milliliter. So to determine the volume of diluent, we first need to know the powder volume. And to find the powder volume, we make use of the equation final volume equals volume of diluent plus powder volume, let's call that PV. So the powder volume does not change. And so we can use the first set of information provided, which is the 12 ml volume of diluent and the 15 ml final volume to find the powder volume. And so that would imply that you have 15 milliliters, which is the final volume of the suspension, reconstituted suspension. And that should be equal to the volume of diluent, which is 12 milliliters of purified water, plus the powder volume, which we do not know, so let's call that X. We can go ahead and solve for X, so X equals 15 milliliters minus 12 milliliters, and that gives us 3 milliliters. So the 750 milligram dry powder has a volume of 3 milliliters that is contributing to the final volume. So now that we know the powder volume, we can essentially repeat the process to determine the volume of diluent that is needed to prepare the 20 milligram per ml or 100 milligram per teaspoonful concentration. So that would imply that we can make use of the equation final volume equals volume of diluent plus the powder volume, let's call that PV. So we are looking for the volume of diluent and we know the powder volume from the previous step to be 3 milliliters, but we have no information on the final volume for the 100 milligram per teaspoonful or the 20 milligram per ml preparation. And so the way we proceed is to make use of the understanding that final volume is also given by the quantity of drug divided by the final concentration. And so this ratio is also equal to the volume of diluent plus the powder volume. So we can go ahead and substitute the information into this equation. And so that would imply that you have 750 milligrams of drug divided by the final concentration, which is 100 milligrams per teaspoonful, but that's also equal to 20 milligrams per milliliter. This should be equal to the volume of diluent, which we do not know, so we will say X, plus the powder volume, which is 3 milliliters. So the milligrams cancel out, and the left hand side of the equation is equal to 37.5 milliliters. That should be equal to X plus 3 milliliters. We can go ahead and solve for X. So X equals 37.5 milliliters minus 3 milliliters. And that implies X equals 34.5 milliliters. So the volume of diluent will be 34.5 milliliters. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you would like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies, then don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.